Welcome back guys. In today's tutorial, we'll be looking at how to get user input. We'll be looking at the switch statement, functions, how to separate functions into separate CPP files, and as bonus material, we're also going to be covering enumerations. Let's get started. For simplicity reasons, I haven't showed you guys how to get input yet, so I think now's the best time to show you how to do that. Before we dive into it, I also want to show you how to perform another pause. So I showed you before how uh, send.get performs a pause so that way whenever you uh, run your program before it terminates and you can't see what the result is whenever you plug in that send.get it pauses your your system and allows you to see exactly what the output uh, of the uh, of the program is um, another type of pause is system parentheses quotation pause quotations parentheses semicolon and this is equivalent to send get in terms of uh, doing a system pause um, whenever we start working with uh, input and output, sometimes that send.get kind of interferes with things. So from uh, through the rest of this tutorial, I'll be using system pause. To get user input, the first thing we have to do is to create a variable. We're going to create an int, call it grade, and assign it to zero. Then in our int main function, we're going to display a message. We're going to see out, type in a grade. Operator in line. Then now for the magic keyword to get input, it is CIN greater than, greater than. Notice that the operator is opposite than C out. C out has less than, less than, and CN has uh, greater than, greater than. Uh, we're going to say CIN greater than, greater than, greater than, and then you plug in your variable. We have our set as grade. So basically, whenever this compiles, it's first going to display type in a grade. And then underneath it, it's going to be waiting for input. So you type in a grade, and then we can see out another message. Your grade is. And then you type in the variable name, grade. So when we go to compile this, let's see what happens. We're going to go up to local windows debugger. We're going to run it. It says type in a grade. We're going to say 70. And it says, your grade is 70. Press any key to continue. Uh, notice how 70 and press are uh, combined. One way of fixing that is you can plug in another operator and then put another inline there. So that way when we go to run it, 70, your grade is 70. Press any key to continue. So it allows it to you know, make it a little bit easier to read, make it look a little more professional, I guess. As your code gets more and more complex, you may feel the need to document on your code what each piece of your code does. So that way it makes it easier for you to uh, recognize what parts of code do what. It makes it easier for others to read your code. So say if you go to school, teachers are going to require you to comment your code. So that way it makes it easier for them to grade your, 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 your code. Also, uh, one benefit to it is if you work on a program that's pretty complex, if you don't comment it, if you ever put down that program and then go back to it to make changes, you may have trouble seeing what each part does. So basically how to comment is you use slash slash, and there's a few ways to comment. This is just one way of commenting. You use slash slash and then anything after this is just more of a notation. It doesn't get compiled, but allows you to notate your program. Um, so line nine, see out type in grade. What does this do? We're going to comment this is the initial directions and then line 11 is send grade slash slash um, this accepts user input and then slash slash um, line 13 is see out your grade is grade. Um, so what this does is this displays result with user input. There's a few different ways to comment. This is one way of commenting. Uh, like I said, it's, it's very useful to know and I kind of was delayed with uh, explaining how to comment this, but, um, but definitely utilize this tool because it'll help you out in the long run. Now let's look at switch statements. So what we have so far is a variable called grade. It's an int type and equals zero. 
we have a C out message type in grade and we have send operator grade. So this is going to take our user input. Now for a switch statement, how is it constructed? You type in switch parentheses and then grade. This is going to say whatever grade is, we're going to perform an action no matter what grade is. Um, you put in curly braces because this is uh, basically going to contain our different cases. Then you type in specifically C A S E case. And then we're going to type in 100. So if grade is 100, what is it going to do? So you type in case 100 and specifically a colon. And then underneath it, you write in what's going to happen if the case is 100. We're going to say C out. You made a perfect grade. If I can spell grade right. Okay. And then whenever it displays this message for it to leave the switch statement it needs to break so you actually have to type in keyword break semicolon then underneath it we kind of start over we write in another case let's say case if the case is 90 C out you made a um, how about your grade is an A. And then we put in our break. Now while I type this out, I just also need to tell you that case statements don't work with numbers that range. Basically what I mean by that is let's say if we were to say like uh, 70 through like 80, it doesn't accept that. It actually has to be a constant number. Uh, so case 80 colon C out your grade is a B all right and the next one is case 70 colon this is a little repetitive, I apologize, but it's just to get the full effect. Your grade is a C in line. Okay, so what if the number is not 70, 80, 90, or 100? Uh, you can put default. So this basically says if it's not one of these four numbers, default to something else. So we're going to say default C out your grade was not passing bum 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 and you don't have to put a break here but it's best practice too I suppose oh we forgot to put a break here break okay so kind of an overview switch uh, a switch statement basically goes through different cases. It's all the, otherwise known as a case statement. So here we write switch and then our variable and then uh, curly brace are different cases. So you put case and then whatever the number uh, of that variable could be. You also can use it with uh, char. So let's say if grade was a char and you typed in uh, like C, you can put like case C, C out your grade. Uh, was in the 70 range or something you know what I mean uh, but what this will do is it'll go through each case and the reason why uh, switch statements are better than a whole bunch of if statements is because an if statement will compile each possibility and with case statements let's say if the case is a hundred and it breaks it won't even uh, go through lines 18 through 29 uh, so with less work that the compiler has to do the, the better uh, so now we go to local windows debugger and we type in, let's type in 100, 100. It says you made a perfect grade, press any key to continue. Now let's try it again, type in a grade. Now let's, uh, let's say 70, your grade is a C. Now let's try, let's try 50, say I bombed this test. Your grade was not passing. So it looks like it's working. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit more about functions. You already have some experience working with functions because int main is a function. But how do we create other functions? Well, basically, first you have to say what type of function you want to make. The first function we're going to talk about is int. 
Um, so basically you put int and then the name of your function. You can name it anything besides main basically. Uh, we're gonna put int and then get grade. And we're gonna use our camel casing of course. And then we're gonna put some parentheses and then under that we're gonna put in curly braces. So basically whatever we put in these curly braces is gonna be our function. So what we're actually gonna do is copy what we've typed so far and see out type in grade and then see in grade. We're gonna copy that and paste it um, into our function. So what this is going to do is it's the int function is you type in int and then what you wanna name your function. So we called it get grade. Uh, and what get grade will do is it'll display a message, type in grade, and then it'll ask the user for, uh, for the grade. Uh, it'll input whatever the user input and assign it to grade. Uh, since int always has to return a value, we basically have to type in return grade. So that way, whenever we invoke it, whenever it's done performing the, uh, the function, it'll return a value. Uh, so how do you invoke a function? Basically, you go into your int main and then you type in the name of your function. So we're gonna type in get grade. You put in those parentheses and then a semicolon. And what this will do is this will uh, perform that function. So basically it'll copy the content of get grade and po uh, paste it right here. So what happens when line 18 is compiled is it'll display, type in a grade, it'll ask for the user to type in a number that'll assign it to grade, and then it'll return grade. Uh, so when it returns grade, it basically will carry out the rest of the function like it's supposed to. The next function we're gonna talk about is a void function. A void function is a little different than an int function. Basically, how to create a void function is you type in the word void, and then you type in the, the, the name of what your function you want it to be. Let's say uh, display grade. You put in your parentheses and then your curly braces. And then now uh, we can uh, put in these curly braces what we want our function to do. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna copy our uh, switch statement that we have and we're going to paste it uh, into our void display grade. Uh, one difference between a int function and a uh, void function is that an int function will always return a value while a void function uh, will basically perform an action that doesn't necessarily return a value uh, but just more of like it performs a function. Uh, for example, uh, how to uh, invoke it is we're going to go into our int main and we're going to type in void uh, display grade parentheses semicolon. Now one thing you'll notice, oh we don't have to type in void, my mistake here. We just type in display grade uh, parentheses semicolon. Uh, so what this will do is, one it cleans up what int main looks like. Int main now just has your functions in it. And then above our int main we have two functions. We have our get grade and we have our display grade. Uh, so basically, whenever we get to that entry point of int main, one is it'll perform the function get grade, which is, you know, displays, type in a grade, and then it gets the user input. And then the next function is display grade, where it basically goes through that case statement. Let's see how it runs. We'll go to local windows debugger. It's alive. And then we'll type in, uh, it says type in grade, which is supposed to. We'll type in 100, and then it says you made a perfect grade. Great job with keeping up so far. I think here's a good stopping point. We're going to continue this tutorial in another video where we're going to cover how to separate functions into separate CPP files. We're also going to cover enumerations. Uh, until then, here is your homework. Here's your homework assignment in pseudocode. What I want your program to do is display a message asking for a number between 1 and 10. Then allow the user to input a number. Now, you yourself Choose a lucky number between 1 and 10. So let's say if I pick 7. Uh, create a switch statement that validates the number and displays a message if they did or didn't guess your lucky number. So you're, you're going to create a, a switch statement and it's going to have different cases. cases uh, case 1, case 2, case 3. Uh, so if, I, uh, if my lucky number is 7 and the user types in 3, in case 3 it's going to say you did not guess my lucky number. 
Uh, but if they guess seven, in case seven, you'll display a message saying, you did guess my lucky number. Um, once you have the, uh, the user input and the switch statement where it all works correctly, I want you to then take the code that you use to get user input and create a separate int function utilizing the code. Um, and then also create a void function that uses the switch statement uh, to validate user input uh, with the different cases. Um, basically, I want you to, to create this functionality uh, and then take the functionality and uh, turn it into different uh, functions, one an int and one a void. Because if you can complete this homework assignment on your own, you are well on your way of becoming a programmer. And I really appreciate your patience with everything. Um, and I really hope that you're practicing this on your computer because if you're not practicing it, you're probably going to be lost. Stick around for part two of this tutorial.